Hello and welcome to Fuchsia TV, a show dedicated for showcasing and empowering women worldwide. I'm Ria Sinha, and today we have the pleasure of welcoming an inspiring and influential woman, Marcia Dyson. She's known as an activist, a dedicated mentor, and the founder of Women's Global Initiative, a company that is focused on creating strategic global partnerships on behalf of women entrepreneurs for prof profitable, purposeful, and social engagement. Marcia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Ria. So, my first question for you is, how did your childhood and your growing up contribute to the career path that you decided to take in the future? I've been always a precocious child, and I feel like that even now. I feel like this precocious child because it set me on a path of adventure. And I grew up in extreme poverty, so when I go to other countries now and I'm in an impoverished situation, I can relate to the people that I'm working with or working on the behalf of, not out of a hierarchy or a sense of superiority, but of empathy because I've been there. And I think my childhood of lack uh, has a lot to do with that. I think to being sequestered in a segregated community made me want to transgress uh, a lot of the borders that were set for me socially and politically. And I've always been the kind of child that my mother said would give her a heart attack because she didn't know where I would end up going, what I would end up being, and how I would find myself in the world. So I think that that kind of set a base for me to explore, to be an international and concerned global citizen. Yeah, and then um, where did you attend college? And like, how did your college career help you choose like what you wanted to do in the future? Well, back then, as in now, especially, you had to realize in the 60s, in the era to which uh -huh. I went to university, and in a very segregated uh, city of Chicago, I didn't have mentorship. So at that particular time, black women, or women in general, you told to be a certain thing, a nurse, a teacher, or a secretary, even with a degree. And I didn't have a lot of the tools, or really, I didn't have the people to push me along the way I, I would have liked. So I thought of education, but I was deep into science, quantum physics, astrophysics, wow. and now technology, uh, as you guys know it, as coding, I actually did Fortran language where we created uh, the language for the computers, which was very huge at the particular time, but I did not advance in that at that particular time because I did not have the mentorship, yeah. and I was only a girl, an African-American woman in the classroom, so I didn't have that classroom support either, but I kind of lament that, but now I'm with Fusey and other tech platforms with young women and women of my generation that have excelled. So um, at the University of Illinois, I got that particular uh -huh. bearing. And when you go to university in the 60s in the United States, it was a very heightened political time like it is yes. right now. It was highly charged because of the racial dynamics, because of politics. It uh -huh. was, you know, a hippie era when everybody was feeling good and groovy baby <laughs> and that added to my adventure as well. Yeah, okay. And then how do you define your job or the career path that you've taken? It's kind of hard to define uh -huh, because yeah. when you walk in your authenticity and your mm -hmm. purpose in life, when you interact with something it changes you. So it changes your direction and your perspective and it also might be a moment of exploration and growth and because of the ways into which I didn't have a set path, I let those adventures open me up into new ideas and thoughts and then it kind of changed and morphed what I thought my particular goal would be. But there was one thing that I have not changed and which I'm very sensitive to is this global empathy and a sensitivity toward the others. Because when you ask me what was a mark that really set me on the trajectory is in 1959. I know that sounds like dinosaurs roaming for you, but I saw the movie, that, The Diary of Anne Frank, mm -hmm. and when I saw the horror of her life and her hiding, I felt like that girl, so much so that when I heard a police car or a fire engine, it turned into the Gustavo, da, 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 and I would hide under my bed and my mother had to come and get me, wow. and I was always afraid for this girl who was not black, as I was, she was Jewish, I didn't know at the time with her race. Well, I'm just now revisionist history, different religion, another country, but I had empathy for her and her fear became my fear. And that has stayed with me forever. Yeah, wow. And you touched on this a little bit, but like, what really inspired you to pursue the path of global empathy? Like that 
hold that core value? Well, another film, I'm very culturally uh -huh. sensitive. I saw the film 100 Days Around the World, uh, Jill Verne's movie. And, you know, it was a hot air balloon race and they were going to Spain and they were going to Paris. And I just thought, oh my God, the colors were so vibrant because we just got Technicolor. Uh -huh. And the, every culture just resonated to Mexico, Paris. France and the cultural expressions and I wanted to be part of that world so I wanted to travel and so when I could travel I've been all over the world I take in the culture I take in the politics and I take in um, the sensibilities of the people and try to sensitize myself more to it so I can translate it so now that when I go back on economic development it's not about what I think you should do I just want to help you to do it and be the connector based upon all the opportunities and advantages I have had in this almost four decades of traveling and being and doing with other women especially because I did not have that myself. Yeah. Okay. And how do you think your family has um, inspired you in your work life? Well first of all they've been very supportive. Uh, my husband, uh, been a renowned scholar. He's more national. I call myself the international Dyson. <laughs> but for my children, I want to make sure that they sense themselves in a global context rather than just being Americans. And my grandchildren, I make sure that uh, they are acclimated to various cultures, mm -hmm. that their friends are just as diverse. And then I take them on a lot of trips and explain things to them and make sure that they read books or watch programs that will help develop their global sensitivity and their sense of self, too, on this earth. Yeah, that's amazing. And then, how has your cultural background also like helped you propel you forward? And, like, well, because of uh, the legacy of slavery, and then, too, with the legacy of slavery, we come from many ethnicities. Mm -hmm. I know I did have my DNA tested, so I have some Asian in me, wow. Irish. Of course, African in the Chibok area where the girls were taken. So I feel like the United Nations is yeah. going through my blood. And I find myself feeling at home no matter where I am in Brazil because of my name and yeah. my love for salsa and, you know, and Latin culture. But I, I think that all those things um, sort of blended in and allowed me to situate myself uh -huh. in yeah. the world. Okay, amazing. And then what causes do you stand for personally and why? My Hulk. I think life being now, when I look back at the trajectory of my life and I look forward, what I long for is this notion of evolving humanity. Um, I think I spoke to you earlier uh -huh. about, I feel that technology is really the smartphone and we have become as humans the artificial intelligence because we don't explore enough in our own creativity. We don't take time with nature. We let Google, though it's a great platform, be the finite resolve of our exploration and I don't like that and what my whole goal is whether it's an economic development whether it's in cultural sensitivity whether it's in my humanitarian work is how do we have our lives to evolve humanity in a great way that we can keep up with the greatest resource on earth to me is human capital and, uh -huh, yeah. and how to make life pleasant for everybody economically and socially so that the devastations of war and terror won't rip us apart and make us barbaric yeah. like in the beginnings of time. <laughs> yeah, and then um, you mentioned that you're writing a book which is called yes. <laughs> Your Reverent Memoir of a Grown-Ass Woman. Because I am, I can't even you know, play with that when I am. And it's coming out in 2020. So yes. like, how did you come up with the idea to write this book and it's something you've always wanted to do? Well, ironically, I was at a literary award uh, banquet and I was talking to the president of the publishing house for about 10 minutes uh -huh. and just giving her snippets of my life and she was fascinated with it. And she called her senior editor over and said, I want her life story and I thought it was a joke. It was an April, <laughs> extended April Fool's joke. And then I got a uh, phone call and then an email saying that they wanted my book and because my husband is a prolific writer and had written 20 books, I even called them and said, you sure you don't want him? <laughs> the contract is wrong and they said, no me. And it made me kind of weep that just in that 10 minutes that she saw some value, which yeah. is the reason why I love Fusia World mm -hmm. because you're having a platform where girls and women can see their value and it took six decades, six decades and four years for that contract where I really felt to my core what you're trying to present on that platform which is why I, I love your 
of Fuzio world. And so she saw me. She saw my life was exciting. And because people always say, oh, you're so nice. You want? I said, no, in order to get where I've gone, I had to be a badass. Yeah. So <laughs> it's irreverent memoir of a grown ass woman because I have been through some stuff. I have seen some rivers and I have cried some rivers and I want to tell my truth. Yeah, and I think that really speaks to the power of storytelling that in just 10 minutes someone can really be drawn to your story. Absolutely. So it's a very powerful platform, yeah. storytelling. Um, and then what is your creative process when writing this book or any? Well, because it's a memoir, and I did write a novel uh -huh. prior to this, and now I think I'll release it after my memoir, is that um, to me, I think Einstein said it best, that creativity or imagination is greater than knowledge because you can situate yourself with nature, which sort of calms your mm -hmm. soul mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I think that that process has allowed me to kind of flow easily because with writing a memoir where you had a hard not uh, life, sometimes you cry, you revisit the pain, you revisit the tears, you revisit the struggle, but it also allows you to know that other people today have those same struggles. Yes. And with that, I'm able to tell my story as it was then and bring it currently to things that are happening so it makes sense to the reader as yeah. well, which is unfortunate, but it's a blessing as a writer to be able to relate my past to what has happened in the future. Yeah, to so, like, look to the past. Yes, look to the past. the past. I was, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then, so is there anything else that you would like to tell young girls from all around the world who might be watching? To nurture yourself and to nurture your spirit and find ways in which you can describe and enjoy your own sense of happiness. That we are all beautiful, we're like an oasis of flowers, we might be a rose, we might be a daisy, we might be a tulip, we might be a dandelion, but we all have this beautiful fragrance that can open to the sunshine of someone's smile. And if we don't see that, then we should be the smile at least to reflect on someone else so their happiness then becomes infectious to us and bring this beautiful, I think, awakening, I call it, of Eve to this earth. I think that women, we can do that and we have the capability of doing that, but we can only do it well if we ourselves are happy and fulfilled. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you so much for being thank on you. Fuchsia TV and being a part of Fuchsia. So thank this you. is Marcia Dyson and we're signing off. <laughs>